Hi everyone, Tysel here. Um, this is just a short video to accompany my workshop in uh, Magic Effects where I talk about using Photoshop's uh, video timeline to animate your static illustration. The, the Photoshop timeline, some of you may already be um, familiar with it. Some of you designers out there have probably used it in the past for uh, animating banners and so on for websites. Um, but it's had some significant upgrades recently. As I mentioned in the, 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 the article, the tutorial, um, it seems to me that there are quite a few areas where this could apply. Uh, for example, if you're a, a, a comic artist or an up-and-coming comic artist, well, the, the comic world is very slowly getting to grips with the, the digital realm and um, an exciting part of that, a component to that, is, is motion comics. And so I believe that if you have a certain amount of understanding of how you could take your static image and, and animate it, that would be a really good thing for you if you want to enter into that, that world. In editorial illustration, we're seeing you know, so many products that um, they have a print entity and uh, they also have a digital space, be that e-publishing or um, online. Or But it's really the, 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 the concept art that um, is I, I think is kind of interesting because as concept artists you're you're generating these ideas and they're static paintings but if you're a good concept artist you're thinking about well you know how does this how does this visor work how does this um, spaceship land how does its landing gear work and stuff like that and if you incorporate motion into your concept artwork you'll actually be able to start that dialogue that you're going to have to have between a, a, a modeler or an animator um, through using um, animated illustrations. So I kind of think you concept art guys might enjoy playing around with this. This is actually what we're going to be doing today. Um, personally for me, I'm coming at this as an editorial illustration and it's got too much movement in it. Um, in fact, at the end of the tutorial, I'd show you how to do a export the image as a animated uh, GIF or GIF or however you want to say it. Um, and in order to keep my file size down, I actually took out a lot of the stuff that was being animated. But in the tutorial, we'll go over certain tricks that you can do. So, yeah, let's have a look. So here's my um, illustration, and uh, I've already resized this down to uh, a, a more manageable state. Uh, the next thing to do really is to just get a little bit organized before we get into things. So I'm just gonna pop these two images into uh, a folder called animation and then I'm ready to open up the timeline. Um, you need to create video timeline. Click that button and uh, drag it out. What I'm actually gonna do here is just set it into the dark area at the bottom. So uh, I can just bring this down a little bit and you'll notice that the default is at five seconds. Before we get into anything, we need to make sure that we enable the timeline shortcuts because we're going to be using a few of those as we progress along. And um, well, the first thing I'm going to start out with is uh, some light streaks that I want to paint along the side of this weapon. So create a new blank video layer. And that appears down here on the left hand side as well. You can see there's my folder light streaks and I need to just drag that layer into the folder. You don't need to do this, but it's just a good way of keeping track of things. And before I get started actually painting live lines, I want to do a guide. And uh, making sure that this playhead here is uh, set to the start and you can quick cursor that with uh, hitting the top cursor key and it pops you straight back to the start. So what I'm going to do is just find myself a brush and uh, you know, pick some sort of random colour and I'm going to paint out the, um, the marks just to get an idea of how many marks I need to make and um, where they start and where they finish and how quickly it's all going to appear. Um, so here, basically starting out, make a little mark here and then using the cursor keys again, all I need to do is hit the right cursor key 
and then keep going hitting the right cursor key moving forward if you notice down in the timeline the playhead is shifting along sometimes you'll notice that I have to keep flipping over to um, to the layer clicking on the layer and coming back off uh, I'm not entirely sure if this is a um, a bug in the timeline or whether this is a something to do with my whack on maybe but um, every once in a while it will freeze up and I found what the fix to do is just click off the painting and click on the layer and then get back to it so there you can see the the basic guide animation that I've made and it's um it's coming in around about 15 16 frames and seeing as I'm working on a 30 frames per second um, that's roughly half of a second so that seems to be the kind of the right speed that I want this to occur so what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a go to video layers and make another layer and this is just going to be my second guide um, and making sure again that the playhead is right at the start of the timeline I'm going to make another set of marks somewhere along at the top here and they're really that just sort of ends there anyway so maybe I need to make another set of marks somewhere else I'm going to make them make a few up here and you can see they're sort of following this natural channel um, that's in the uh, along the back of the weapon we go down to here click back on click back off okay and I'm around about the 17 frame mark so yeah let's just play that back uh, each time you can just hit spacebar to play hit spacebar to stop and in fact if I just drag this marker back in here I can actually loop back play within those specific frames so you can drag the, the marker from the left and then drag the marker in from the right to just identify one part of the timeline that you want to replay so um, yep these are good I'm gonna jump in now and make uh, make some live marks um, again just drag this playhead all the way back to the start five second back to the end sorry five second mark that one seems to creep over uh, that's because it was the, the actual layer was created well, the current time indicator or playhead was a couple of frames in, so just drag that back in. Um, something we'll look at now is the uh, the onion skin process. And uh, we'll just go into these onion skin settings and I'll explain a little bit more. So let's just freeze it here. So onion skinning kind of harks back to that cell animation days where you'd be able to flip between acetates to see how um, your work was progressing. Um, so looking down at the options here, what you we have is um, the first two options, uh, the onion skin count, are the amount of frames that you want visible either side of the, the current frame. Um, the frame spacing though dictates the number of frames between the displayed frames. Uh, the max opacity percentage is for frames immediately before and after the current frame, whereas the minimal ones are the, the, the marks are on the outermost edge. I put in three and three for three frames after you see the see the marks that appear there and uh, I could bring those values back down to two so you get the general idea is, is you're getting a, a, a guide before and after the frame that you're you're working on so it's pretty damn helpful so now I'm ready to start painting in some live lines I've gone to my um, to my mixer brush now and I'm just going to sample around here to get uh, get some value, get some colour in and, uh, again using the same process I'm using the right cursor key to move um, forward through the keyframes um, through the frames and uh, just painting in very nice marks just getting a bit more uh, 
texture that kind of well, is, is exactly the same as the painting really it's the same mix of brush that I used so I'll just turn off those layers and let's preview yep preview the first live painted one again I'm gonna just bring our preview selectors down so I'm just looking at there nice and zippy looks pretty good and uh, just gonna keep working this up now um, if I just grab a bit more of a blue and I start putting some blue around the edges um, just to replicate that blue LED glow merge it in I mean it's it's half a second long so I'm really not that fussed about uh, how detailed these are are they it, 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 I want to make them look natural. I want to make them look like they're part of the image. Um, uh, in fact, it's about to pull the pull the trail off a bit here. Quite a nice effect. Um, you notice how I'm actually going in underneath those casings. That's just a a really small detail that I I hope some people might pick up on. Like I said, the animation is very very quick, but. Um, uh, the eye might pick up on hopefully the, uh, the sense of depth there is between the, the, the back of the gun and the, the casings that are flying forward so there we go we're much done on that one and uh, let's play that back very nice so I've just jumped straight ahead now of, uh, as you can see I've made a, a few more light streaks made four more light streaks there they are and again I've made all of these at the start of the animation um, we'll get into to editing them at the end of the tutorial let's just have a pull back a bit so you can see them all animating very nice okay so let's just drag that indicator back up we're done with that let's make a new set let's call this atmosphere and um, this next technique is uh, very, very simple. Um, I need a solid color, but I'm not really fussed with what the, the, the color is because I'm pulling the fill down to 0%. And I uh, duplicate that. So now I've got three. And I'm going to start using the, the pattern overlay. Um, and this is to add uh, some, some dust marks in the background. Um, but first of all, quickly let me just show you how I make a a quick custom texture. So if I find a photo, open this up in a separate document. I need to desaturate that. So that's uh, Command Alt U. Bring up desaturate or saturation, and uh, Command L for the levels and really crunch up the values here. Looking good. Um, and the next stage I'll go into uh, Gaussian Blur. This is to make them all. Uh, Make a few more grey areas so that I can go back into the levels and again crunch them up. So uh, I'm getting uh, getting rid of all the fine detail and, and trying to get these kind of really nice textural splatty blobby marks. Next, uh, head up into the filter gallery and uh, um, well, actually, I need to change my colours here. So uh, D on the keypad brings them back to the black and white values there you go let's just zoom back a bit okay so just going to use the torn edges filter here to bring some more of them back and, and just get the some nice visual blobby bits of dust so I'm happy with that um, next thing to do well I actually I need to clear up this top right hand corner because uh, I don't want any hard edges to my pattern so uh, just very very quickly delete that away and you get rid of you okay that's good so now all I need to do is pop up to edit and down to define pattern and uh, label my new pattern and this will go directly into Photoshop's pattern picker so anything that uses the pattern picker um, like the pattern overlay does will be able to to use my own texture. 
So we'll just pop it in, show you. There, there you go, there you see it. Okay, so to animate this, what we're going to do is we're actually going to come down to that layer and we're going to animate the style property. So we click on this stopwatch icon here and that creates a keyframe right at the start of the timeline. Um, a, a keyframe is a, a marker that denotes a, a change along the timeline. Um, and the, 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 the closer keyframes are to one another, the quicker that that change occurs and vice versa. And here is just trying out a few different uh, blend modes to see what works with these, these marks. Uh, I think that's, that's probably a good one, linear burn. Just bring the opacity down a bit, see what it looks like. So in fact, I'm, I'm gonna use a different pattern here. I'm gonna use a, a pattern that I've used before. I didn't like the amount of marks that were on the other one, so that looks a little bit better. Let's, let's multiply 83%. Let's, so, yep, yeah, that's fine. Got a keyframe here. Now, if I hit the uh, down cursor key, it pops the the playhead right to the end. And now I'm going to make a change by dragging this pattern across the image and OK in that. That's made a, an automatic keyframe at the end, and now you can see we got from the start. To the end and this this indicate there that the um, playback looks a bit choppy and the playback sometimes does look a bit choppy but keep your eye on the the marker down in the corner that's uh, red once that goes green you you've got proper playback effectively and so um, that's how we do that effect I'm going to do that a couple more times on these other layers it's worth noting that um, the more that you, you drag these patterns across the image, uh, the quicker the animation occurs. So if you only drag it very, very slightly, um, you're going to get a slow animation. And if you drag it several, several times across the canvas, um, you get uh, quite a quick animation. So here I'm just, um, just messing around with some other patterns that I've created see what effects I can get and um, you know it's a little trial and error really just seeing what works it quite a fluid process just like painting is you know you just gotta give things a, a shot before uh, you settle on exactly what you're gonna do so um, she's gonna use these marks and uh, Right on this one, set another keyframe for the style. Pop the playhead back to the end. Uh, I think I'll actually I'll, I'll drag these in the the other direction just to get a little bit of variation going on. See what this looks like. Okay, so you can see it's still playing back quite slow. So let's shorten the preview. I mean, it's an old fantastic effect. It is a nice effect. It still does look like a, an animated pattern, which is what it is. But uh, it, gets the, it gets the point across. Um, you can maybe I'll set that pattern to, um, to act as a, a pattern going behind. So now I'm just find myself a box standard brush and uh, using the layer mask. Just going to uh, paint over, roughly paint over the, uh, the character. You can see I'm creating the mask there. And that should, um, again, just give us that kind of sense of depth that some of this detritus in the air is uh, behind the character and some of it's in front of it coming over his foreground so just get in and clean that up okay so yeah that's it's nicer a bit more sense of depth going on there so I've actually gone back and tidied these up a lot actually and changed the patterns and uh, made a, a better layer mask so let's just uh just play that back through. 
yeah, I'm a little more happier with these uh, these these dust marks. It's not a bad effect. Um, so this next boot actually wasn't in the um, magazine, but I'm going to show you how to how I went about creating the animated visor. So uh, create a new folder, and uh, that's that's where the animation is going to go. And now using Firefox, I've jumped over to Imagine Effects' website and uh, using their inspect element, the Firefox inspect element, to grab a bunch of text and uh, place it onto a, to a layer, text layer, and uh, just size this accordingly. Just need to change the leading here so that the type is a lot tighter. Yeah, okay, something like that will do. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Let's put on seven points. So seven, seven point size. Kind of roughly just position it here. See, this is where I want it to to animate across the visor. And uh, just going to make a another layer mask. Just uh, using the lasso tool to start out with, just to get a get a rough basic shape before I edit it um, to look a lot cleaner. And oh, there you go, lasso tool. A bit temperamental as has been on my uh, my machine. Fill that with black. Now invert that. There you go. So now my text is contained. I'm gonna. Just use the refine mask options um, just to give this mask a bit of feathering. Um, before I do that, I just want to clean up using a brush set to uh, set to white. Just clean up around these edges, just roughly brush in. Get a little bit tight and just roughly brush in closer to the edge and I can always keep flipping between black and white to erase and then to fill and then to erase and then to fill so uh, just catch these edges um, like I said I will use the refine mask tool because you can uh, apply some really nice feathering uh, if you hit F on the, the keyboard, you can actually cycle through the different previews. So it's a good tip. Then shift the edge. You need to shift it in uh, down in this negative direction. And that's made it uh, smaller, tighter. And add a bit more feather and uh, contrast that feather so it's not too fluffy. And uh, I actually need to put that mask on the folder so that I can do this, which is turn my text into a smart object, which opens up in a separate window so I can edit it in isolation. And when I save it and close it, it saves back to my image with those edits. Which is a pretty handy technique. Uh, and now I'm ready to, to morph it. Usually your liquify tool is set up that option but what I need here is the bloat tool let's get it a little bit tighter shall we and uh, with the brush just to the edge the text I've added a bloat there you can see it's warped it so I'm actually going to use a Photoshop animation preset here by uh, clicking that disclosure triangle it brings up these motion options I need to click off the uh, resize fill canvas and set that to 90 degrees and now what it's going to do is it's, you can see it's made some automatic keyframes at the start to the end. And it's uh, animating this layer in a 90 degrees or a value going from the bottom up, which is uh, nice, gives it that scrolling effect. Like he's getting some sort of intel, constant intel coming in on his visor. So that's all the all the properties all working together, but you can see just scrub it all back. Um, everything's happening all at the same time. And uh, that can get a bit too much for the eye. So what we're gonna do now is we're just gonna get into editing these layers. 
along the timeline. But first I need to get these uh, these hand-drawn light streaks. Um, I need to pull down these layers. You can drag the handles from either side and get them down so that they're in line with the grey bar, which indicates the the, uh, the the marks per frame. So that needs to drag in here. And drag this one down here. That little preview window is quite helpful, but doesn't really help seeing as my marks are quite small. But as you scrub along, you can see what uh, your animation in that preview window, which is quite helpful. So there you go. There are all my all my animations set. You can see that one there is occurring in that grey bar. There you go. Okay, so let's just reduce this down so I can see the entire five seconds, put the player back at the start. And now I'm just going to arrange these along the timeline so that they they appear at different times. You know, the different arrangement on the timeline means that they are going to appear at different points of time. And um, just zoom out so I can see all of my image and the animations see what works and again like digital painting with illustration there's a lot of gets animation there's a lot of trial and error and just preview things try them out see if they work see if they don't work um there's no hard and fast rules really i don't i don't think there really ever should be but um yeah experiment around with moving different things in ways that um you probably didn't initially plan and you might find that the animation gels better um, and that's the great thing about editing I mean, that's, that's editing for you you get to try out different um, solutions and see see which one you're happy with that's taken quite a while to chug through as you can see as I said earlier it's uh, when it's in the red it's not good so now we're into the uh, export settings Click that little arrow icon in the bottom left hand corner and um, let's name up the file, select a destination folder for you. H264, that's uh, a recognized format setting that uh, YouTube uses, it, etc. So it's uh, pretty good for web, web videos. Um, and uh, there you go exporting it out this has actually been sped up so uh, if your video takes quite a while to export don't worry I have just uh, sped things up for the sake of this tutorial uh, one last thing I'm just going to show you is um, let me just get rid of some of these layers I want to show you the exporters uh, gif uh, option the save for web option but uh, need to make my animation a little bit lighter so I'm gonna I'm just gonna leave it with just the light streaks and I might actually yeah and take this down by 25% it's just rasterized a layer which is fine okay and then we click up to file save for web and we're using the the gif preset Click down here and put on forever so that it loops and you can actually preview it while you're in this window. Uh, you can mess around with the lossy settings which is the compression settings. Uh, you need to change the size further if you want here. So I'm just gonna just gonna try and decide <laughs> where I want to put this. Uh, whether it matters, but there we go see that it's the GIF file and export that out. Now if I just find that in, uh, and we can chuck this into um, into our browser window to test what it looks like, what the playback would look like. Let me just, I don't like Firefox. I don't want you thinking that I do, but you don't want to see all my bookmarks. So there you go. That's uh, an animated GIF, and 
You don't see enough of those on the web nowadays.